Realistically, do I need any new books? No. But have I had a bad week? It's called being ill. And do I feel like I deserve some books? Absolutely. So we're going to the bookstore. I will be spending all of my money. If we could run it, if we could run it back, and do you wonder? If we could run it back, if we could run it, if we could run it back, and do you wonder? If we could run it back. I bought too many books. I suppose we should go in order. I've also got some other things to show you that are kind of like books I've bought recently or acquired recently that I haven't spoken about. So let's first start with the ones that I bought during the filming of the bookshop content. 
So the first place I went to was the WH Smiths in the station and um, they had a buy one get one half price deal on all books so of course I capitalised and I bought She is a Haunting by Trang Tan Tran. My pronunciation will be bad, I'm very sorry. This is a horror novel um, about a girl who goes back to Vietnam and the house is all kind of like haunted and weird. The other one I've got, because I could not resist the hype any longer, is My Brilliant Friend by Elena Ferrante. Now, as some of you may know, I'm not a big fan of romantic books, however I really really love books about friendship, and this book literally has friend in the title. My dad says it's quite weird, and that normally appeals to me, but I've heard only good things about this, and I'm curious to see what will occur during these pages. Next, I went to Aesop's in Soho because they were giving away three books. Yes, I may have queued for half an hour. It kind of felt like queuing up for Tesco's during the pandemic, but I mean, it was worth it because I got a free book that I really wanted to read. This one is a twisty thriller about the fate of a sprawling family in Lagos. It's a revenge thriller like no other, apparently. One of my favourite books of this year so far was published by the same people that published this, so I don't know if that actually means I'll enjoy the book, but I sure hope it does. <laughs> then I went to my good old friend Foils. I ended up picking up Shadow and Bone in French because A, the cover is beautiful, B, it's like insanely floppy, floppy to the point of ridiculousness. And finally C, I want to read some books in French. I kind of need to considering I'm going to be starting B2 classes in the autumn. And the vocabulary seems fairly easy-ish. I mean obviously there'll still be words I have to look up, but I don't think it'll be too difficult to read. I've always wanted to read this series but I kind of feel like I'll enjoy it more in French because stuff will go over my head and I won't be as critical of it because if I don't understand everything, then I won't be able to be as critical of it. But yeah, that is Shadow and Bone by Lee Bardugo. Then I went to the huge Waterstones, Waterstones Piccadilly, which is the biggest bookshop in Europe. And um, first I picked up Bellies by Nicola Dinan, which I believe is kind of like, what's this about? While out with friends at a university night, Tom buys Ming a drink. Confident and witty, a charming young playwright, Ming is the perfect antidote to Tom's awkward energy, and their connection is instant. Tom finds himself deeply and desperately drawn into Ming's orbit, and on the cusp of graduation, he's already mapped out their future together. From London to Kuala Lumpur, New York to Cologne, we follow Tom and Ming as they face shifts in their relationship. Apparently it's a bookseller favourite. I read a little bit of this book. I don't actually know how, considering it wasn't out, but I thought it was really well written and yeah, the booksellers apparently like this in Waterstones because that's what the guy told me. Anyway, I got a signed copy, so that's always fun. Also from Waterstones Piccadilly, I picked up If He Had Been With Me by Laura Nowlin. Now this is apparently a very, very sad book. I think it's kind of like a friends to lovers situation or like they wanted to be lovers but they didn't end up. Now this is my least favourite trope but apparently it's really sad and I want to make a video where I keep reading books until one makes me cry and this has made a lot of people cry. It's a bit of a book talk sensation because book talk loves books that make people have a dramatic reaction and I've kind of been curious about this book ever since I heard about it. Next, I went to my little independent bookshop in my area and, you know, I picked up two books because I can't make decisions, so you may as well just buy two books instead of one, right? Now, the first one I kind of heard about myself. I saw it in the bookshop, I started reading it and I thought, oh, this is nice. And also the cover is probably what drew me in, let's be honest here. Now, this is another one that appears to be about friendship. It's a translated book. It's by Riku Onda, but it's translated by Philip Gabriel. There's a quote on the back that I really like, but I'm not going to read that out because this video is already long enough, so yeah. But that is Honeybees and Distant Thunder. And finally, I picked up Brutes by Diz Tate because I feel like this one is going to give me 
the correct summer vibes that I so desperately want. It kind of gives me Stranger Things vibes, but without the sci-fi. I don't know if that's a correct comparison, obviously I have to read it first, but the cover is also quite intriguing. Okay, now let's get on to two books that I recently got from charity shops, because I like buying books from charity shops, because at least I know I'm not spending all my money on books, because they're cheap. The first one I picked up is Home Fire by Camilla Shamsi. Now this is about mythology, it's kind of fantasy-esque. The synopsis doesn't really give too much, it just kind of mentions some darker, stronger forces. Now this section is what I call, I got a gift card and um, it was inevitable really that I would buy books with it. So the first one is All the White Places by Ali Wilkes. This one is a horror. It's set in the First World War. Jonathan Morgan stows away on an Antarctic expedition, determined to find his rightful place in the world of men. But not as all smooth sailing. Now completely isolated, Randall's expedition has no ability to contact the outside world. Dun dun dun! Now this one kind of reminds me of that bit in Frankenstein, where the captain and his crew are kind of stuck in the Arctic. And I feel like this is just gonna be a full-length novel of that, but with more horror. It certainly sounds very atmospheric. Then I got Brother Alive, which is by Zane Khalid. This one is set after 1990, and it's kind of about three boys who become friends and adopted. And um, there's a shape-shifting familiar called Brother, who supports our protagonist, I guess but also steals his memories and shakes his grip on the world. It seems as though he'll be travelling back to Saudi Arabia, where he is from. It sounds fairly interesting. I discovered this book because it was shortlisted for an award on Blackwells. But yeah, it's kind of like magical realism adjacent literary fiction, which seems to be something I read a lot of. Yet another magical realism book. The Human Origins of Beatrice Porter and Other Essential Ghosts by Soraya Palmer. This one sounds quite weird, or at least that was the impression I got. This is another new release. I don't really fancy paying full price for this book, but since I found it second hand, I don't know how considering it's literally just come out. Uh, this one is set in Brooklyn. Ooh, there's a bookmark. Cheers whoever left this in here. It's kind of about the power of stories and haunting. The synopsis doesn't really give that much away. Should be interesting though, I do like a nice ghostly type thing. This is a self-published book called Welcome to Dolly Hall by Alison Greaves, and uh, this is about... It kind of gives me dark academia vibes because there's a mention of students of the Royal College of St. Almsworth disappearing but then coming back changed. The protagonist appears to be investigating the disappearance of his old brother. It sounds kind of generic, but it also sounds weird and intriguing, because what is the connection to the mysterious Dolly Hall? I guess we'll find out when I eventually read this. Now the next one is because I was suffering a severe case of FOMO, because the Netflix adaptation of this is either coming out soon or has come out. This is Nimona by N.D. Stevenson. I picked this one up in French because it was cheaper than buying it in English. And also it's a graphic novel, so it should be kind of easy to read. What's this about? It sounds like they're in a kingdom and there are dragons. I don't know why it kind of reminds me of the kingdom in Shrek. It's kind of like that sort of fantasy graphic novel. I mean, the art style and the colouring is really nice. I'm afraid if you can't speak French, you won't be able to read it, but that's cool, isn't it? Only two to go, and they're both more 2023 releases. I seem to have quite a few of those. And that's interesting because I like reading new releases, but they're also expensive and my bank account is crying. I mean, it's been crying for a long time now. Anyway, this is The Writing Retreat by Julia Bartz. This one is about our protagonist who goes away. She's kind of joined by other aspiring writers and it's kind of like deadly NaNoWriMo because they have to write a new book from scratch and then people start dying. And apparently this gets crazy. I don't know how I feel about ridiculous thrillers because sometimes I enjoy the ridiculousness but other times I just think it's too stupid and then I hate it. It's a fine line. And finally, Small Joys by Elvin James Mensah. 
This one I picked up, having heard absolutely nothing about it. I read the first little bit and I was instantly gripped, so I decided to pick it up. I believe this book starts when Harley, one of our protagonists, I guess, has dropped out of university and has now returned to Kent and feels like a failure. But then he strikes up a friendship with Muddy. I think this is kind of about mental health because there is a mention of depression. It seems like the ingredients for a really good book are there. And since I've already read a bit of it and liked it, hopefully this will be really good. But those were all the books. I mean, look at all these books. Look at them all. I'm going to be doing a lot of reading this summer because otherwise I literally will never get through all of these books. But that is the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed my kind of unhinged and chaotic book shopping vlog. I mean, I still have not conquered my fear of filming in public. Anyway, I sincerely hope you enjoyed this video and consider subscribing, please. Let me know what you're currently reading and I will see you all in the next one. Goodbye. <laughs>